Hi guys, uh, welcome back to another quick little review video I'm doing for you guys on my YouTube channel and um, it's good to see you guys. I've been having some good views regarding my other um, reviews I've been doing on my YouTube so I'm really happy about that. So really looking forward to doing a lot more of these things for you guys in the near future. Right, what I've got here today is the Sigma 35mm 1.4 arc lens. I am a big 35mm fan, um, so big in, in fact that when I first bought the 50mm lens, which everybody rants and raves is your must have lens in your kit, I never fell in love with it. I really never got anything that I could say is uh, worthy of keeping in a portfolio with the 50mm lens back then when I started shooting with it. So then I sold it off. So a couple of months later, about a year or so later, I played again with somebody else's 50mm lens and I fell in love with it again um, purely because I had more experience and I could do a little bit more technique and I could get sharper photos at lower f at wider f-stops. So I started shooting again in the 50 and it was really awesome. I got some really lovely stuff. Then a friend of mine who's an avid film shooter um, bought this little Canon 35mm f2 lens. Now this is an old generation lens. Um, it's free autofocus, but it doesn't have an ultrasonic motor in. And he gave this for me to play with. And lo and behold, my 15mm is just laying like a paperweight in my bag again. I'm shooting 35mm all the time. If I don't have my 7200 lens on my camera, I've got my 35mm on. And if I've got to do portrait shoots, uh, model shoots, uh, weddings, fashion, whatever, I take my 7200. And my 35mm lens. So when Sigma came to me and said, I must have a look at the 35mm f1.4 art lens, I said, by all means, with 35 being my, my one of my preferred focal ranges at this stage. Now, as you can see, this being the older Canon F2 lens, it's quite a little bit bigger and definitely a lot fatter than this because it's got more glass in it because it's a 1.4 lens and this is a 1.2. There you'll see the front the front elements between the two. Now this one takes a um, I think it's a 58 millimeter filter thread where this one's got a 67 and that is a lot better than this purely because if you're shooting video, which 35mm is amazing for, um, you can put filters on it. And I can use my graduated filters on this for landscapes, in, in case I want to use this for landscapes. Um, which I can't do this, because this is a 58mm thread, and um, I'm just double checking the lens cap. 52, sorry, 52mm lens uh, uh, filter thread on it there. So, I will need to get extra adapters to use my current graduated filters with this. Also, I would need a different set of UV filters, which I don't use anyway, but polarized, screen polarizing filters and all that kind of stuff, which with this is you can, I can have one set and I can switch it between different lenses. So that is one majorly big advantage. The other one obviously is the 1.4. Um, if you've got a very steady hand, you can shoot this in really low light indoors. Um, but I, I need to state that you need to have a very steady hand because it's the, the margin of error and the depth of field on that 1.4 is so, so thin. Um, I shoot this at f2 all the time and I just love it. I love the effect I get. I, get, I love the lens flare I get out of this. It is awesome. I just did a shoot with um, uh, Mr. South Africa finalist now. Uh, a couple of minutes ago, well, I shot mainly with this. I needed to see what the, what the difference is, and I shot with this as well. I, I, I want to compare the two photos next to each other, basically the same poses, same lighting, same settings, everything with the two lenses. I want to see close up. A little stuff that I want to look at is chromatic aberration, um, because I know on this old lens it is it can be pretty horrible in in backlit situations. Nothing that can't be fixed, but it, it's clearly noticeable on, on the computer screen if you zoom in. So I'm, I'm curious to see what this one did. Um, I shot it at f2 
so it would, would not be fair to shoot this at f1 and this at f2. So I shot all exactly the same settings. Right, um, it, it is a really solid lens. It, it, it feels like good quality. It, it sits nice in the hands, um, especially if you're shooting um, full days. Where this, is, where this is nice and light, it, it, it's about the same weight as a little nifty 50. Um, slap it on and off you go. It's like, I'll just show you what it looks like on, on the body. So there you go. That's it there. It's really nice and light. There's nothing protruding too far. So if you've got it on your sling, hanging on your hip, that can really bump that much. Well, this is quite a bit further out. So you can see this, it's about double the length. Um, but I've, I've really uh, fell in love with this. Um, one thing that I did notice on this is, um, and your all your Sigma art lenses, you can get the, the, the docking station with it. Now the docking station, which I, which I don't have here, um, is where you can fine tune your lens to your camera body. Now I've got two Canon 6D bodies, and I shot with this on my other body. Um, not, not this one, the one I'm busy filming on. And it was soft at all the low f-stops. I could only start getting sharp images at f2.8, f3.5, and upwards. Whereabouts, if with, with this on both my Canon bodies, it is razor sharp from F2 all the way through, um, which which was a little bit worrying for me. And and now I played with it today on this body, and um, I must say I'm very happy with the images. They are sharp. Um, there's a couple of off ones here and there, but I, I, I will equate that to human error, with me moving a little bit because I, I, I focus center point and I recompose most of my stuff. Um, a lot of the stuff where it's portrait that I shot, I shot um, uh, with the focal point. I moved my focusing point to the specific, um, moved it to the specific uh, focus point on the person's eye. So I'm very happy with what I got with this lens today. And, but I want to see what it looks like on the computer versus this one. My main concern with that being if if you need a docking station to fine tune it, and like I've seen now between my two camera bodies, my main concern is, and, and I've not tested this. This is purely what I'm what I'm thinking is that if you set the fine tune it for your one body, it's going to be out on your other one, um, and I would I would love to test that. I'll, I'll need to get a docking station from Sigma, and 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 see what it does because I've got two Canon 6D full frame bodies. And I've got a 7D Mark II crop sensor, and I've shot with this on the crop sensor, and it, it, there was nothing wrong with it, it looked fine. Um, I actually shot some stars one night with it. But the concern is between my two full frame bodies, because these are the two I carry with when I shoot weddings, and to, to, to chop and change between lenses and, and your wrist, the chance of getting soft photos, you simply cannot take that. So. At this stage, I'll, I know um, I need to shoot with it on this particular body, and I know the two, two apart from each other. One is newer than another one. So I will just need to make a mental note that I must only use it on this body for time being until I figure out if that is the case. Right, so long and short, it's a fantastic lens. The reviews online is amazing. I've read a whole bunch of them. Again, with the other lens review, I'll put the, the, the link to the lens on the Sigma website in the, in the notes below, um, where you can look at all the technical stuff, like how many aperture blades it is, um, what it's constructed of, um, how many elements, all those little nitty-gritty things that 90% of the people don't really pay attention to. They just want to put it on, get really sharp photos. And, and what I've seen today is it, it's, it's plenty nice. So my main concern is now what I need to look between the two is what my, my bokeh looks like um, between the two lenses, what, what lens flare looks like, and also um, sharpness and the main thing is chromatic aberration. I, I know this will be better than this one because I've seen some of the photos with the really bright purple and green fringing. So I'm 100% sure this will be better than this, but I would just like to have a look and see what they look like compared to each other. So, um, in a couple of minutes, I will um, show you what those look like on a computer. Same as what I did with the other ones, I'll do 
side-by-side -side comparison in Lightroom and you will be able to see exactly what it looks like. Right, see you in a minute. Alright guys, let's have a quick look at some of the images from the Sigma 35mm f1.4 art lens. Um, this is from a recent shoot I did um, in my studio and um, as you can see I shot this image um, at, a, at a very narrow um, aperture to get to darken out the, the ambient light and just to use the studio strobes to light my subject. Um, over here you can see it's 35mm at f16 the max uh, sync speed for my flashes is 1 60th of a second on the Canon 6D and ISO 50 so very low, very low sensitivity to light on my sensor there so it was all up to the uh, studio strobes to light them up. Right, let's have a quick look, closer look here. That is pretty sharp. Um, really happy with that but normally most lenses step down to f16 f11 um, is generally really sharp so some good detail in the bag there um, some good skin detail uh, right this is another one also f16 35 mil 1 60th of a second as you can see that is really sharp let's just darken this a bit um, lots of detail in the lots of detail on the skin as well um, in the gloves lots of detail in the bag in his forearms here in the muscles that's really nice but now yesterday I did a quick shoot with um, a Mr. South Africa finalist um, and I shot in a couple of various different uh, scenarios and I also shot with my Canon F2 um, uh, lens just to compare the, the two lenses next to each other and particularly what I'm looking at a chromatic aberration so let's have a quick look this is one of the images completely raw untouched image um, inside just some natural lighting coming in from the window here this was shot at quite a high ISO ISO 1000 um, I have shot higher but I shot at F2 just to which also allows quite a bit of light in. There you can see that is really nice and sharp. If with a little bit of added sharp ring in there, um, it will really pop. You can see lots of good detail in the skin texture on the hand. And you can see it was a little bit chilly as well, but that's fine. Still a beautiful photo. Then we stepped outside quickly. So, all right, let's have a look here. Um, these were shot natural light outside this is untouched images no editing done so let's have a quick look in this was shot with the Sigma 1.4 lens at f2 you see all the settings of your eyes at 200 one six one six hundred and fortieth of a second uh, shutter speed and there you can see that is lovely and sharp really nice um, I'm just going to toggle through a couple of the images and then I'm going to show you a comparison between the, um, the Sigma lens and the Canon lens. And I've, I haven't looked at this yet on the computer, so this you guys are looking at it with me for the first time as well. Um, there we go. So, lovely and sharp. All of the F2. This one is a little bit softer. The tip of her nose is in focus, but the eyes is, is, is soft. That is human error. I wouldn't say that's back focusing or front focusing, anything like that. It, she might have moved a couple of millimeters, I might have moved a couple of millimeters, and just with that thin uh, depth of field, it just might have just moved off a little bit. Um, next photo in the sequence. There we go. Another one. Perfectly shot. This is still with the, um, with the, with the Sigma lens. Sharp. Really sharp. Lovely. Um, this one is off. This is also with the Sigma lens, but again, I say this can very easily be human error because you can see there is sharp bits in the photo, so it might, might, might have just been the movement of myself or the model. There we go, there's another one. That one is perfectly sharp again. Right, this is one I want to compare with, um, with one of the Canon images. 
So if we look closely, let's see if we can see any chromatic aberration happening here. Let's zoom in a little bit more. This is zoomed into about 200%. Um, looks like there's a tiny little bit around the edges of the hair there. Um, maybe a little bit around the sparkles in the hair. I can't really see anything noticeable or well, that might be worrying so let's go have a look quickly at one of the Canon photos right that's a Canon the Canon F2 same settings as well um, still pretty nice, nice and sharp and what's nice about this little Canon lens is it gives you this lovely rainbow sun flare um, you know, images which I really really like. You can have a look on that jacket here. But here I can clearly see some aberration happening. Let's zoom in a bit more. Just look at all this purple fringes around the hair here. Now for the for the untrained eye you might not even notice this. I just I just clearly see it. But that's that's pretty easy to fix. Let's uh, quickly pop into the develop module. And if you scroll down to um, to lens correction, you see color. You'll see defringe color correction. So you'll see the amount is just set to zero. So as soon as you start moving, you'll see the purple going away. So then also you just need to play with the with the U a bit to make it a little bit more natural. There we go, that's almost pretty much sorted it out. But like I said, with the let, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison between this and the um, Sigma lens. There we go. Right. Side by side you've got the Sigma lens. It doesn't say Sigma in the in the um, uh, the meter data. I I just don't know why it does that. On the right, let's let's quickly have a look. You've got the Canon on the left hand side, Sigma on the right. It just says 35 mil. Let's quickly have a look. Let's just uh, it's going to quickly reset this uh, image, one that we tweaked a bit. Okay, right, there we go. We've got Canon on the left, we've got Sigma on the right. Um, you can see the settings is exactly the same. I just want to show it one, 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 two thousand, one. This was shot at one, one thousand two hundred and fiftieth of a second. But that's, that's marginal in the thing. But right, let's have a quick look. The main thing is in the, in the chromatic aberration at f2 you can see that very very little with well, this is you can clearly start seeing it in the hair on the edges there and in the jacket as well on the side let's look at two other images to compare them right that's the canon one and here okay let's just do a canon and a sigma Now these will shut all on Sigma. There we go. Right, let's have a quick look in these two images. Same scene. Um, same shutter speed, same everything. Canon on the left, Sigma on the right. Right, let's have a look. The Sigma lens definitely looks a lot clearer than what the than what the Canon looks on this one. Really good uh, contrast in the hair there as well. And in the lens flare is not as pronounced as the the Canon one. Really nice. 
Okay, so that looks really good. I, I did a couple of other shots as well. These were all shot with the Sigma lens, so let's quickly have a have a quick look here. That's beautiful and sharp. Sharp, perfect. Oh, I can't find any faults with these images. They are really nice. Um, very happy with the performance of the Sigma in this case. Uh, there's a little bit of chromatic aberration happening in the corners with the Sigma at F2. Some purple and green fringing happening here. Um, that is normal. You'll find that in most of the most of the corners, um, especially in high contrast areas. But this is uh, this is not that fantastic actually. But right, let's have another look where we're going to compare two um, the two lenses next to each other. Right, we've got the Sigma on the left and we've got the Canon on the right. Definitely not as much flare or haze happening in the in the image as with the Canon. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes I really like that look you, you get in the images, especially the people, the clients really like that look. And let's quickly have a look at the corners. No, actually it looks, looks fine. Let's zoom in a little bit. All the settings was the same exactly. And this yeah, sharpness. Sharpness is pretty much spot on on both of them. Um, definitely a little bit more detail in the, <clears throat> in the Sigma image on the left here. Like let's say some skin detail in a neck area versus the Canon. Um, but that's part of the haze. The haze is blocking all that. Okay, let's see if we can see some noticeable fringing in the hair. A little bit happening in the highlights of the ear. That the Sigma one is pretty clear there. Uh, let's see if we can spot some more. Tiny little bit happening in the background here, but nothing too hectic. Right, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm really happy with both of the lenses. I've, well, my Canon is my, my, one of my workhorse lenses, like I said earlier. I, I shoot with it all the time. But definitely the, the Sigma is a fantastic lens to have in the bag. Um, I really won't mind shooting more with it. Unfortunately, this one has got to go back. Right, let's do a quick comparison. Look at two other images. Slightly different angle, um, settings is exactly the same, 35 and Canon on the right, Sigma on the left. Let's quickly zoom in a bit here. Now it's, it's a bit soft and that's human error, but let's have a look for the chromatic stuff. Looks good. And as you can see there with the Canon, Canon is bang on sharp. Tiny little bit happening in the hair. With the highlights. Oh, and again, the, the Canon, the haze on the Canon one is, a, is much more pronounced than the Sigma one. Right, so in, in conclusion, the Sigma is a fantastic lens. Um, I honestly won't mind having it in my bag. Uh, but like I said earlier, the main concern with this thing is, and you can see it here, it's perfectly sharp on this. Um, Canon 6D body of mine, but my other one, I, I really battled with sharpness up until about f2.8, f3.2. So, um, just to say again, it, it's it's a theory, it's not proven yet, but my worry is if once you've got the lens set up for your one camera body, 
uh, via the docking station, you might have a problem with your other cannon, your, your other camera bodies. Um, so, but again, it's something I need to physically test. And once I've done that, um, I should only be able to comment on that. But by the looks of things, it, it is it is going to be a, a, one of those cases. Seeing as two Canon 6D bodies, exact same sensors, everything, and there's a noticeable difference between the two. Um, but yeah, I'll still keep it in my bag, definitely. Even if I've got to make a mental note of the, the body which I've set it up to, and just shoot it on that particular body. Um, especially if you're shooting the two of the same uh, camera bodies. If you've got, like, like, let's say, a 5D Mark III and a 6D, um, I'm, I can't comment too much on that. I'm, I'm not sure what the, what the effect will be, but it will be really interesting to see. Right, so I hope you guys found this helpful and that I could have explained a couple of things to you. And uh, if there's any questions, pop me a mail, leave a comment, um, any other suggestions, uh, please feel, feel free to let me know. Thanks, guys. See you next time.